Hello everybody, this is Pradeep, a lecturer of English from Vishwamanava Composite PU College, Chitradurga. I have been here to deal with the rest part of your short story, A Sunny Morning. Now, I would like to welcome you all back to today's session. Now, I am going ahead to bring something back into your memory, what I presented before you all yesterday. In the previous class, we came across the conversation between Donalara and Don Gonzalo as they kept talking to each other for long. Both of them kept accusing each other for finding something wrong in themselves. In the previous class, we came to know that Dona Lara said to herself, What an ill-natured old man! Upon receiving the words of Gonzalo, that is, What right this old man had to criticize my actions? On hearing these words, Dona Lara got frustrated and said to herself, His words certainly would bring someone an irritation. He was such a ill-natured old man and further suggested that people shouldn't be upset or angry when they reach a certain age in their life. She kept looking towards the right side of the park to where Don Gonzalo and his servant Zunaito were going in search of a vacant seat or bench. After looking at them, she felt very happy finding Don Gonzalo and Zunaito, discovering no bench left at all in the park. That uh, made her to feel very happy. And uh, later, she sympathized with the position or condition of Gonzalo that he was in. Now he started rubbing his face to remove the perspiration that was on his face. When she had seen his position that he was in, she was sympathized. And later she further commented that in a very next sentence, even a huge vehicle which was left on a road wouldn't create a more dust than his feet did. And this is how she remarked over the actions of Don Gonzalo. And later, Gonzalo and Zunaito came across her bench where she was sitting on. While coming across her bench, Don Gonzalo asked Zunaito a question whether those three breeds have gone or not. In response to the above question, Zunaito told Gonzalo an answer saying that no, indeed, say no, they were sitting still there. They are talking to each other. They were still there talking to each other. He told Don Gonzalo like this. And later, Don Gonzalo found no alternative at all. That's why he accepted his position that um, had become inevitably to him that he found himself caught in a position where he should go on the same bench on which the old lady was sitting, that our Dona Lara was sitting. So, after accepting this fact, he had gone nearer to the bench of Dona Lara where she was sitting and used to sit on the same bench with the old lady on the other end, which means at the extreme end of the corner of the bench he used to sit on. And he has muttered himself that is, uh, while uh, muttering to himself, 
he sat at the extreme end of the donalaras bench and uh, after being seated he started looking at her very angrily thou he managed himself to console for a while and had touched his hat as he wanted to greet her saying good morning and later what we came across is that she was astonished to see the presence of gonzalo very next to her that's why she has asked this question are you here again she wondered at the presence of this Gon- don gonzalo after having a much conversation between them after accusing each other she wouldn't expect the coming of this don gonzalo that's why she has uh, she has asked this question are you here again don gonzalo here had given the same answer to don lara as he did it at the beginning of the story again he told lara that i repeat that we ever met each other both of them hadn't met each other ever before they were not familiar each other to keep conversing that's why he didn't want to have a much conversation with this don lara he wanted to escape from her that's why he had repeated those words and now she answered don gonzalo saying that she was only responding to his salute when he was giving his wishes towards don lara while sitting on her bench he gave his salute by touching his hat in response to that don lara was also reacting to is a salute only so that don gonzalo told don lara that instead of doing all these things my wishes should be answered by good morning which means he wished her saying good morning so that he advised don lara saying that my good morning should only be answered by the good morning that is odd he that is all you should have said to me and later donalara she made a mention that you should have asked my permission before sitting on the bench which belonged to mine of course as the belong as that bench belonged to her he must have asked her permission before sitting on it that's why she has asked like this Gonzalo gave her a same answer here the benches here in the park are public property everybody could come in and go out and everyone could sit on them they had the ability to use all those benches that are that were available to them in the park as they are the property of the publics don lara Uh, now she admitted with the opinion of this gonzalo i accepted with your opinion as yes, of course the park that belongs only to the publics though you com- you filed a complaint against those three priests who had occupied your bench that was yours why did you complain that the bench that belonged to you though this park is of a public property this is how she asked him a question now he got furious after hearing don lara's words and in between his teeth he muttered something that is sinel old lady which means she had lost her mental faculty and he, he has advised her saying to himself that she had better to be at her home knitting and counting her beads you might have heard or read in your history that many women would be at her home knitting and counting their beads praying to the god in those primitive ages and this is what was advised by Don Gonzalo to Dona Lara 
after having those words from dongles do lara ordered aro dismissed don gonzalo saying that not to grumble any more he wouldn't leave out of the place or bench only to make him to feel happy and let her both the playwrights had introduced us some actions of don gonzalo which were not common gonzalo took out a handkerchief out of his pocket and started brushing the dust that was fallen on his shoes this was keenly observed by don lara after having seen this behavior of don gonzalo lara asked him a question that do you use your handkerchief as a shoe brush to remove the dust out of your shoes don gonzalo in response to the above question told her that why not why shouldn't i use don gonzalo don't know donal are start to say more that do you use your shoe brush as a handkerchief which means vice versa now don gonzalo was infuriated so he in with a anger he told donalara that what right she had to criticize his action she had no rights at all to criticize his actions as they were unfamiliar to each other upon hearing is to say lara made it a mention that it's a neighbor's right she had the ability of asking anything to a neighbor one who sits next to her don gonzalo now he didn't want to keep conversing to her that's why he asked he asked he wanted to ask uh, a book from his servant zunaito that's why as he didn't want to listen to the words of this lara he wanted to, to take himself upon reading a textbook that's why he as uh, asked a book from the hand of zunaito and uh, on hearing those words from gonzalo dona lara responded uh, him saying that uh, he was a very polite man he knew how to behave with the other people he is a very civilized person in a very ast- in a very uh, what we call in a very humorous humorous way she says so uh, these words don gonzalo asked her pardon or excuse in front of her and suggested her not to interfere or get involved with what is not relevant to her she needs she needs not to mingle with anything which doesn't concern to her and later this is how the conversation took place in between don gonzalo and don lara io both of them kept talking to each other and later as uh, no longer don gonzalo wanted to listen to the words of this don lara he asked uh, a book from the hand of zunaito after being asked a book from don gonzalo zunaito he took out one of the book out of his pocket and he handed it over to don gonzalo and he departed towards the right side of the park after giving it onto the hand of don gonzalo after having received a book from the hands of zunaito he had thrown a angry look towards lara who was sitting next to her and later he put a big pair of glasses on his eyes and he took out one of the reading glasses and he had adjusted both of them to suit him and later after wearing his spectacle he had opened his book to read on after having seen 
these actions from Zunaito, Dona Lara thought that he was taking out a telescope which was um, which is a magnifier that is used to see the distant places. It seemed to her as if it is a telescope that much of a size a pair of glasses was in and uh, both of them involved in accusing each other, scolding each other as uh, they involved in uh, commenting the other and uh, both of them started uh, talking about uh, the sight, their eyesight. Dona Lara, after having seen Don Gonzalo wearing the glasses, she told him that his sight must be very keen or very clearer. Don Gonzalo responded to her saying that, of course, his sight is very keener or clearer than hers is. And she reacted to him saying that in a humorous way that evidently I had already seen the way how you put your enormous pair of glasses on your eyes. It becomes, it became one of the evident for me how keener your eyes are. And after coming to know that Don Gonzalo used to wear a spectacle, she comes to know that Don Gonzalo couldn't read the textbook without the spectacle. That's what she says as here. And later Don Gonzalo advised her to ask the heirs and patriarchs to know more about how keener is eyes are. And this is what I presented in our previous class. And let us make a move on to the next slide from where we need to go on. And here what we see is that Dona Lara, how do you end? When Don Gonzalo has made a mention of you go and ask those heirs and patriarchs after hearing those words from him, Lara is surprised to hear those words. When do we certainly use this so, ah is that when we are surprised or wondered to hear someone words we can use this term ah to show our surprise. As she is surprised to hear his words she shows her wonder saying ah do you and now a question that rises in her mind that whether Don Gonzalo would go on for hunting. That's why she has asked this question. Do you used to hunt animals only for feeding himself or his family members? Don Gonzalo. Now he has admitted that he did. In the previous days, in the olden days, when he was a youngster, he usually had gone to the plantation for only for hunting. He did it for himself. He used to hunt animals or birds. And even now, he hadn't ever stopped hunting the animals or birds. Even now, he keeps hunting the animals and birds. That is what he is trying to tell Dona Lara here. Of course, oh, yes, of course. Oh, how do, how do, Anuantaha Arthadali, then I held on to the Nanavili in Norta Hidebe, which means Dona Lara is not in a position to accept the words of Don Gonzalo, and it seems to her as exaggerated words. And Don, Gonz uh, Don Gonzalo, as he uttered those words before Dona Lara, she as a producer the words saying that oh yes of course now she finds herself in a position in a, a dilemma she couldn't be able to understand or uh, she couldn't be able to believe those words from Gonzalo whether he would go on for hunting that's why in a, with a little confusion she has produced these words of course of course you go on for hunting 
ಡಂಗಸು ಎಸ್ ಎನ್ನವರ ನೌ ಈ ವಾಂಟ್ಸ್ ಟು ಮೇಕ್ ಡೋನಲಾರ ಟು ಬಿಲೀವ್ ದಟ್ ಈ ವುಡ್ ಗೋ ಆನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅಂಟಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವೈ ಈ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ಮೋರ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೆಸಸ್ ಆನ್ ಈಸ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಐ ಡಿಡ್ ಆರ್ ಈವನ್ ನೌ ಈ ಈವನ್ ನೌ ಗೋಸ್ ಆನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅಂಟಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವೈ ಈ ಸ್ಟ್ರೆಸಸ್ ಆನ್ ದೀಸ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಬೈ ಸೇಯಿಂಗ್ ಎಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾಡಮ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಸಂಡೆ ಐ ಟೇಕ್ ಮೈ ಗನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಾಗ್ ವೆನ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಸಂಡೇ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಪ್ರೆಸೆನ್ಸ್ he uses to go with his gun and dog taking them all along the road with him you understand now he has asked donalar you understand he wants to make her to know more how he would go on for hunting that's why when sunday approaches him he has taken out a gun and a dog along with him and go to one of his estate that is located near aravaka where would he go is that he would go to one of his plantation that is located or situated near aravaka which is a neighboring city of madrid this aravaka is known is a now to us as a neighborhood city of madrid to one of his estate he usually goes when every sunday that comes in and after reaching aravaka what would he do all the way all the day is that he would only kill the time all through the day when he is a part of the plantation donalara yes you kill time and she was uh, before this moment she was already aware that he wouldn't do anything that's why she tells don consul that yes i know you only kill the time instead of killing animals and birds you would only kill the time all through the day that is what you all kill and now she asserts saying that that is what you kill the time instead of killing those animals and birds don gonzalo do you think so am i only killing uh, time now don gonzalo as donalara a question over here do you think so as you have mentioned in the above line am i only killing the time e as asked like this to donalara i could show you a wild boar's head in my study to make donalara to trust upon don gonzalo to make her to believe her believe don gonzalo what he wants to do is that he wants to show her a wild boar's head in his study that is hunted by him once when he had gone for hunting he could kill one of the wild boar wild boar in a sense it's a wild swine wild hog the spell of the world is h o g hog or we can say that a swine s w i n e swine in uh, in kannada in kannada terms it can be called as kadu andi to make her to believe he could show her a wild boars that is hunted by him a vandu kadu handiya taleyanna hata torustanante thanu bete haadutiddini anuvantadanna helodikkoskara a kadu handiya taleyanna thanu torusudagi hata helta idane in contrast to the above statement what donalara is trying to tell don gonzalo is that yes i could also show you a tiger skin in my bed she says that she also had miss with the previous statements that is uh, produced by don gonzalo and uh, she could also show him a tiger's skin in her bedroom here bedroom means it is a private room especially kept by a woman in her private room she has kept a tiger's skin which was earlier hunted by her and to show her courageous also her adventures also par with the on par with the adventures of don gonzalo she could also show him a tiger's skin 
and later after having after saying those words she has done goes the question what does that prove what does this show what does the tiger skin that to show you this is what she has asked don gonzalo a question here don gonzalo very well senora now all right senora all right all right madam please allow me to read now don gonzalo requests donalara to let him to go through his book that's why he has requested saying her that please allow me to read he wants to go through his book as he doesn't want to keep conversing with her again he gets irritated after having heard those words from her that's why he has requested her saying that please permit me to read my textbook enough conversation as i told you earlier he doesn't want to keep conversing with her that's why he wants to put an end to the conversation with dona lara that he has with her let us make a move on to another slide well you subside then which means dona lara after being asked that enough conversation by don gonzalo she as advised don gonzalo that to keep himself quiet first subside in the sense subside means keep quiet before letting me to know more before letting me to keep myself quiet you do first that is you should keep yourself quiet instead of speaking anything you should keep yourself quiet don gonzalo but first i shall take a pinch of snuff now the story of this uh, a sunny morning takes uh, an interesting turn from here onwards what do we see is that don gonzalo he wants to take a pinch of snuff which means snuff is a smokeless uh, a tobacco when we press our squeeze it pinch in a sense squeezing it uh, press it the snuff would come out it is in the form of a powder what do we call it in kannada is that nashi pudi don gonzalo wants to take such a pinch of a snuff as he gets tired or exhausted all through the day after having a conversation with her after having uh, dragged his foot all along the way as a uh, is a uh, food has given him a lot of uh, pain as uh, he has nourished a uh, or nurtured a goti a kind of disease uh, that is left in his leg that's why he wants to take a pinch of snuff he takes out pinch box pinch of snuff box out of his pocket and uh, he uh, as he wants to take a pinch of snuff he takes it out out of his uh, pocket and later he offers snuff box to dona lara will by asking her will you have some now he asks dona lara a question here would you like to have some snuff he has asked this question you may feel very better will you have some he has asked like this he offers box to dona lara this is how Don Gonzalo offers the snuff box to Dona Lara. Dona Lara, if it is good, now Dona Lara admits or accepts she would have a snuff box if it is good only. If it makes her to feel the better, then only she would have. that to snuff box which means uh, she would consume a snuff if it uh, feels very better to her if it feels good to her then she would have that uh, snuff on this condition she accepts to take that one don gonzalo yes it is uh, of the finest one after listening to the words of dona lara 
she uh, don gonzalo tells donalara that the snuff snuff it is of the finest one that it tastes very better it feels uh, it makes you to feel very better definitely it tastes very good you may feel very better than you were never before that's why don gonzalo insists dona lara saying that it is of the best one you can have you will like it after consuming it you will keep continuing to take the pinch of snuff you will like it a more that's why you can have a pinch of snuff dona lara taking pinch of snuff from the hand of don gonzalo now dona lara takes a, a pinch of snuff out of the hands of <coughs> don gonzalo she has a taken a pinch of snuff <coughs> and later after having consumed a pinch of snuff from the hands of don gonzalo and she consumes it later and after having consumed she says uh, gonzalo that it clears her head <coughs> after having consumed the uh, pinch of snuff she says uh, that it clears her head as she is exhausted all through the way having a conversation and wandering in the park feeding the pigeons a bread in the park and uh, she has uh, had a lot of tensions in her that's why after taking a pinch of snuff it uh, has cleared her tension now she is out of her tension after having a pinch of snuff that is what she is uh, trying to tell don gonzalo here don gonzalo and mind too Don Gonzalo has repeated the same words that are told by Don Dona Lara in the above statement. Don Gonzalo uses to say the same words as they are said by Dona Lara, and it also a pinch of snuff also clears my head, which means his head is also cleared. Now his head is out of tension. Dona Lara, do you sneeze? And now Dona Lara has asked Don Gonzalo a question here that his that his does your nose produce a sneeze? Which means do you feel do you feel sneezing? Sneezing sins. Akshi, uh, Dona Lara. has don gonzalo a question here after taking a pinch of sneer snuff she feels she feels of sneezing that's why she has don gonzalo a question here would he feel the same as she is in don gonzalo yes senora three times <clears throat> already don gonzalo have sneezed three times that's why don gonzalo says that is Senora I have sneezed it for 3 times already already he has produced a 3 times of sneezing as a, as a pinch of a snuff makes him to sneeze him for 3 times dona lara and so do i she tells him the same that is so do i she has also produced a three times of sneezing what a coincidence both of them have here what a coincidence which means so that happens sneezing happens at a simultaneous time at the same time when both of them have produced each other a three times of sneezing really that could be a coincidence between them that's why dona lara <coughs> tells gonzalo that what a coincidence we have had today after taking the snuff they avoid the sneezes both anxiously and sneeze alternately alternately three times each and after taking the snuff they avoid sneezes 
already both of them have taken the snuff and uh, they await uh, they wait uh, for the sneezes to come out of their nose and uh, out of uh, mere curiosity they want to know how they would sneeze how would do <coughs> how would do pinch of a snuff create a sneezing in them and uh, later both of them have sneezed alternately three times each both of them lara and gonzalo have sneezed three times alternatively at the same time gonzalo there i feel better after sneezing don gonzalo feels more better that's why he says like this there i feel better now he is out of tension though he feels the pain that is being given by his leg or gouty that he has developed in his leg he now he feels very better after taking a pinch of snuff that makes him to feel very better let us make a move on to another slide now lara feels that she also feels the same as don gonzalo that's why she has produced that so do i she also feels the same as that of a gonzalo after taking a pinch of snuff the snuff has made peace between us she says that the snuff that she has taken has made a peace between us in between gonzalo and lara the taking of the snuff has established a peace till this moment when the snuff has been taken by them both of them involved in accusing each other for a long time since they're coming into the park but uh, for the first time <coughs> now a friendship has been established between them after taking a pinch of snuff that is what is she trying to tell us here don gonzalo you will excuse me if you read aloud now in between them a friendship has been established that's why in a very friendly tone don gonzalo has asked dona lara that will you excuse me if i tend to read a textbook aloud as he wanted to read the textbook <coughs> earlier now he takes himself upon reading the textbook that's why he puts himself in a position to read the textbook that's why he has asked the permission of dona lara asking her that will you excuse me or pardon me if i start reading a textbook aloud dona lara read you can read as loud as you please now dona lara has responded don gonzalo telling him that you can read the textbook as loud as you please which means so please means uh, happy you can read your textbook as loud as you are happy in reading it you will not disturb me no longer your voice your voice will not disturb me or trouble me that's why now dona lara allows don gonzalo to read the textbook as loud as he is happy to read it on now don gonzalo is given a permission to read the textbook aloud by dona lara don gonzalo reading now don gonzalo starts reading a textbook that is given by zunaito what is written in the textbook is that all love is sad <coughs> the love that is always sad which means the love that always ends up with a sadness ends up with a sadness which means so in another in another sense or in other words we can say that love always carries people carries the lovers to a despair which means at the end of their love story every love 
the two ends up with a sadness but sad as it is the characteristic or feature of love is sadness as the nature or characteristic of the love is sadness it is uh, it ends up with the sadness the love that's why he gives more focus or stress over this so line saying that that is sad as the nature of love is also a sad it is the best thing that we all know the thing that we get to know out of the love is that that is the one thing all the love that ends up in a sadness that is the major thing that we get to acquire or know that is said by one of the realistic poet or author of the 19th century of spain that is campomor that is from campomor he was a 19th century realistic poet of spain these words are composed by campomor donalara ha i told the people earlier that when do we use this word is that when we are astonished or surprised at any other words at any others words we can show our surprise using ha now donalara on hearing the words of don gonzalo as he uttered the words of campmore that were composed by him now donalara shows a surprise using the word ha <coughs> don gonzalo reading he keeps reading the textbook he will not to sees uh, reading the textbook he keeps it going the daughters what is further written in the book is that the daughters of the modern sorry mothers i once loved kiss me now as they would a graven image the daughters of the mothers once uh, there were a uh, mothers that they gave birth to a daughter here our main focus is on a daughter and the protagonist of these lines and these daughters were born out of the womb of their mothers and those daughters had fallen in love with the protagonist of this of these lines here the protagonist had once loved the daughters of those mothers and those daughters kissed him and as they would a graven image now those daughters have turned into a graven image graven image is a, one of the what we call it is a it is an art that is a carving out it a carving out of the pictures in a wood or on a wood or a, on a stone you people might have seen when you visited uh, belur alebudu har any historical places that you people ever visited uh, in those historical places uh, you could see some graven images of the people one who made uh, the history in their life uh, achieving a more and uh, they would uh, turn into a graven image those lines i take it are in a humorous vein these lines as a uh, <coughs> they are seen in the ebolines these lines are taken by gonzalo in a very comedy that's what he is trying to tell donalara here that's what we call humorous in a sense comedy which certainly brings us a laugh for an hour face and he takes those lines in a comedy donalara laughing these words of don gonzalo has he as he kept reading those lines before lara that <clears throat> makes dona lara to laugh so that she as a produced a laughing ear high take them so to she as also taken those words the same as don gonzalo which means which means dona lara has also taken those words of the daughters of the mothers i once loved kiss me now as a wood graven image are taken as a humorous vein in a very uh, 
in the various way those lines are taken by dona lara as well let us make a move on to another slide <coughs> here what dom gonslow tries to tell dona lara that there are some beautiful poems in this book here 20 years pass e returns that is what do we see is that there are some beautiful poems in this book dom gonslow has witnessed the presence of the most beautiful poems existing in this book when he starts going through the textbook that he has held in his hand he comes out with a fact that some beautiful poems have been written in that book that's why he tells donalara that some beautiful poems have been portrayed in this book so and here in one of the poem what is written is that 20 years pass e returns and now don gonzalo utters these words saying 20 years pass by and after spending such a time of 20 years the protagonist of these lines returns to his place this is what is told by don gonzalo to lara and here you people have come across uh, two kinds of sentences that is uh, the very first uh, is that when uh, don gonzalo has uh, started reading the lines of a uh, campomore <coughs> and uh, the words of a uh, campomore and uh, there are some beautiful poems in this book here 20 years have been have passed this is what we call and when the campomore says all love is sad but sad as it is and uh, it is the way it is the best thing that we all know this is what campomore says in one of his uh, one of his uh, poem and on the other hand we have another one line to see that is uh, there are some but um, sorry a 20 years pass by e returns these the using of these sentences that says as describes as about about the dramatic irony as i told you people earlier at the beginning of this story the story is narrated using a literary devices that's what we call irony or satire and here uh, i told you people in my previous class about the verbal irony but now it is a dramatic irony you people must know the meaning associated with this dramatic irony dramatic irony which means uh, which means a uh, dramatic irony is a situation in which uh, the audience or the readers uh, uh, shares something with the author of uh, the lines of which uh, the character doesn't know anything about the reality and about the future or the present he doesn't know anything about the present or future and uh, unaware of those future and uh, unaware of those future and present he would uh, go on saying something the character that involves in uh, presenting a dramatic irony he would uh, go on presenting something using the verbal words which means uh, outcome the effect of outcome can be seen by his words though he is unaware he would do produce those words here why are these words mentioned is that the love all the love is always sad the words of campomore as he says as the love is always sad but sad as it is that is the best thing that we know which means the love of don gonzalo when he was at his younger age that ended up in a sadness with dona lara here is a similarity here is a connection in between the love of don gonzalo along with lara with the words of a campomore and there are some beautiful poems in the, in this poems here 20 years pass here it he returns and uh, 
after passing many years by don gonzalo came back into the park to meet dona lara unexpectedly knowing unaware this old man is indeed or in fact the same the same girl who was in love with don gonzalo now the old man was is sitting in the park this old man is as the same as that of a girl one who had fallen in love with this gonzalo and after spending many years though they got married to someone else they were in the park sitting each other sharing something and here this is how uh, this is how these uh, two sentences uh, are having the a similarity in the life of the don gonzalo and lara this is what we call the dramatic irony <coughs> and this is how dramatic irony has been used in the present context of, of the story of uh, a sunny morning don lara you can't imagine how it affects me to see you reading with all those glasses earlier she as observed don gonzalo wearing a pair of glasses and a separate reading lenses attached to it isn't it and here she even can't imagine she herself she, now she tells don gonzalo that even she can't imagine that how does it affect her a lot to see him reading with those glasses the way that don gonzalo has worn the glasses on his eyes that has affected her a lot that is what is she trying to tell don gonzalo here now after having heard those words from don lara gonzalo has asked as asked don lara a question here can you read without any can you read the textbook without wearing a glasses now he is in a doubt why is she asking such a question how does she, how is she affected after looking at me the way how i used to wear those glasses is she really affected by me this is what uh, that rises in him that's why don gonzalo he wants to now whether don lara uh, read a textbook using no glasses at all that's why he asks this question don lara certainly without hesitation don lara tells uh, don gonzalo that uh, certainly without a doubt i would uh, read the textbook wearing no glasses at all she says like this don gonzalo at your age and now don gonzalo surprises now don gonzalo is uh, surprised uh, knowing that uh, how confident don lara is in reading the textbook without a uh, glass are wearing no glass at this age now she is on the verge of a 70 years of old as the same as he is at this age how can she read the textbook using no glass at all though uh, he uses to ask these words in the form of a question at your age will you read at your age are you jesting which means so you were jesting are you mocking me mocking in a sense that is a satire what we call in kannada is that vengevanna maduvantadu here is one saying with me that is left in the kannada namge ondu udugi jaane alla budvante alla anta namge gottirutte ake na navu yav rithi venge madabodu anta helidre oh nen bidava bol saane idiya can be used like this that's what we call a mockery and you, you are jesting are you making fun of me like this don lara pass me the book don lara now as a hasked don gonzalo to give her a book from the hand of don gonzalo now don lara wants to have a textbook from the hand of don gonzalo to show him how can she read the book without any glasses without wearing any glasses 
takes book reads aloud now she takes uh, a book into her hand from the hands of don gonzalo now she receives so takes book from the hands of don gonzalo and now she starts reading aloud that is audible to everyone in the uh, everybody everyone surrounding her and uh, she keeps reading aloud what she reads is that 20 years pass he returns and each beholding the other exclaims can it be that this is e even is it to she which means what is she trying to tell us is that Twenty years already pass by, and then later, and then the protagonist have come to his native, and each beholding the other exclaims, "Can it be that this is he?" And what is further written? And this is also one of the irony that is made use, that is made into usage by the two player writes, "Can it be that this is actually he?" After. Having passed our twenty years, he returns, which means now Don Gonzalo is uh, in a park, sitting beside our next to Dona Lara. Can it be? Can it be that this is E? What is written in the book? Twenty years pass, he returns. The same thing that is the same thing that is written as the same as uh, that happens in the life of the. Don Gonzalo, can it be that this is he? Is this a person, one who is sitting at this moment in a park? Is that he, one who have come back after spending a twenty years? Evans, is it she, one who sits next to him in the park? Is it really she, one who beholds her beloved, her beloved? after having seen him of after having seen him a 20 years later is that really she and this is how dona lara has uh, read the textbook bearing no spectacle on her eyes dona lara returns the book to don gonzalo and after reading the textbook don gonzalo dona lara gave Sorry, Don Donalara has given the textbook back onto the hand of Don Gonzalo. After the completion of her reading, she gives it back onto the hand of Don Gonzalo. Don Gonzalo, indeed, I envy your wonderful eyesight. Now, Don Gonzalo, I envy, envy in a sense, appreciate. Now, he puts himself in the position when he can appreciate the wonderful eyesight of this Dona Lara. After having seen Dona Lara reading the textbook, wearing no spectacle at all, now he is surprised along with that he wants to acclaim her, he wants to uh, what we call prizes her eyesight. That's why he appreciates her wonderful eyesight that she possess in her Dona Lara aside in a very low voice as I told you people earlier it's a whispering now she mutters in a very low voice she mutters to herself that I know every word by heart she comes to know how does she come to know those words 20 years pass he returns how does she come to know is that she couldn't be after having seen her saying I know every word by heart we certainly come to know that she can't, she couldn't be able to read the textbook wearing no spectacle at all. She, her eyesight is not as clear as that of a Don Gonzalo's. But though she manages to read the textbook, why, how is it possible to her is that she knows every word of it, of the textbook by her heart. She has kept all those words in her heart. She is aware of all those words. This is how she comes to know. Let us make a move on to another slide. Here what we see is that Don Gonzalo, I am very fond of good verses. 
very fond i even composed some in my youth and after having such a conversation with donalara that conversation prompts or proceeds don gonzalo to tell is a poetic ability before lara and that that is what is he is trying to tell her is that he is very fond of good verses a very fond he is always in love in writing or composing the good verses or poems verses in a sense a poems and he is very fond he is very fascinated or attracted in writing a good verses which means he loves a lot especially writing a poems i even composed some in my youth when he was a youngster when he spent many days uh, writing or composing many poems all those were written when he was a youngster at his youthful days he had composed several poems several verses when he was at that stage donalara are the good ones the poems that you composed ever in your youth were they good ones and could anyone read those poems were they good enough to read would they occupy someone's attention in this manner donalara has asked don gonzalo a question and now don gonzalo says of all kinds of all kinds of poems or verses that were written by me are good enough i had written those poems in such a manner that could attract the someone's attention they are all good ones i was a great friend of esperanza and the question of dona lara for the good ones were your poems or verses good ones to read the question that to prompts don gonzalo to let him to go forward to tell don lara that how he became a friend of with whom he became a friend of when he was a, even he was in his younger age he was a great friend of esprancida zorilla becker and many others when he spent many days in his youthful days composing many poems he became one of the friend he was associated with the friendship of esprancida zorilla and becker and many others these mentioned literary figures were drawn from the 19th century of spain these were the poets authors and dramatists as well and with whom he had developed a friendship i met first i met first met zorilla in america now don gonzalo introduce, introduces zorilla how he had met him he for the first time he had met zorilla in america when he has visited america he met zorilla for the first time in his career being a um, being a writer donalara why have you been in america now donalara has asked as asked don gonzalo a question eo have you ever been in america have you ever visited when would you stay when you do remain living your life in america now she has asked this question to don gonzalo don gonzalo several times i had visited america for several times not only one or twice several times so don gonzalo had visited america the first time i went when i was only a 6 years of old the first time when he had gone to america he was only a 6 years of old he was carried into america 
when he reached a 6 years of old that is how he came to know america that is how he visited that is how and when he visited america is revealed here by his own words donald are now she in a humorous way comments to his above statements he met a he met to zorilla in america when he reached a 6 years of old he met uh, he went uh, he went to america to is a statement donalara has given him a hilarious comment saying that you must have gone to america with columbus in one of his caravels and uh, she is of the opinion that this don gonzalo this old man when he was uh, in a childhood when he was a little boy of a six he would have gone to america with the colum with the columbus on his expedition using his caravels caravels in a sense sense uh, sense uh, what we call uh, a small uh, ships uh, ships that are used by columbus on his expedition And that's why donalara as uh, says don gonzalo that he has uh, he must uh, have gone with the columbus only using his caravels and uh, that uh, brings all love love for on the face of uh, don gonzalo that's why he has produced a love for here not quite as bad as that and uh, when i had gone to america the way the journey that i made to america that was not completely as bad as the for journey of columbus i found no need to go with him what is it trying to tell donalara is that my journey wasn't completely asent is not as bad as the for columbus that's why he says and it, it is not completely my journey is not completely as bad as that of a journey of a columbus i am now old now i have reached a 70 years of old he, he is on the verge of a 70 that's why he says that uh, he accepts that uh, he says so uh, that uh, he is a uh, he is an old man i admit now he accepts that one too but i didn't know ferdinand and isabella both these two the name of ferdinand and isabella is uh, king of uh, aragon and what we call uh, castilla fort and uh, these king and queen ferdinand and isabella supported a lot to columbus on his to conduct his expedition so he says that i do not know who ferdinand and isabella are so how could i go with a columbus using his caravels to america and i even didn't know who ferdinand and isabella were and they were the people one who support uh, who supported columbus on his expedition how could i go along with the columbus he says they both laugh both of them after producing these words both of them love each other i was also a great friend of campmore and now he further keeps saying that he was also a great friend of campmore he has also established a friendship with a 19th century realistic poet from spain named him as campmore earlier Uh, we knew or came across this word who had written the words of oh, all love is sad sad as it is and with whom don gonzalo he became one of the greatest greatest friend with this campmore i met him in valencia where did uh, Don Gonzalo made this campmore is that he came to know about this campmore in Valencia city for the first time he met this campmore in Valencia city this Valencia city 
is now being dis described by Don Gonzalo as his native city. I am a native of that city. He was one of the residents of the two city of Valencia in which he had met Campomore with whom he had developed a friendship. And the, let us make it a stop over here. Thank you all for listening to me all the way, all the way.